Today, we're going to take a closer look at Alzheimer's disease, or AD for short. AD is an increasingly prevalent disease affecting over 747,000 Canadians and costing the Canadian healthcare system $33 billion per year. This neurodegenerative case of dementia was first named by German psychiatrist Dr. Alois Alzheimer in 1901. Before this, physicians in ancient Roman Greece simply associated dementia with old age. Scientists have proposed many theories that explain the potential causes of Alzheimer's disease. While these theories mostly link the causes to mutated proteins in the brain, emerging research has pointed in a different direction, towards the herpes simplex virus. You know, the virus that causes these annoying cold sores you sometimes get. Let's begin with a brief overview of AD. Alzheimer's disease can first be diagnosed through imaging procedures such as CT or MRI scans to detect abnormalities in brain structure. AD can also be diagnosed by assessing intellectual and memory function. Finally, these indicators can be paired with the patient's medical history for a final diagnosis. There are also many warning signs for diagnosing early Alzheimer's. These include memory loss, difficulty completing familiar tasks, confusion with time and place, misplacing things, decreased or poor judgment, withdrawal from social activities, and changes in mood and personality. Eventually, it leads to the progressive loss of mental, behavioral, functional, and learning abilities. There are many biological factors that lead to the development of AD. A common genetic risk factor of AD is the mutated variant of apolipoprotein E, or APOE, called Epsilon 4. 40 to 80% of AD patients possess this version of APOE. The hallmark of Alzheimer's is the accumulation and aggregation of beta amyloid and tau proteins in the brain. Beta amyloid proteins form plaques outside the neurons, whereas tau proteins form neurofibrillary tangles inside the neuron. These protein formations prevent communications between neurons, causing brain degeneration in the temporal, parietal, and parts of the frontal lobe. Although these are the abnormal characteristics of the disease, it is unknown if they are the definitive causes of AD. Therefore, viral contributors such as herpes simplex virus or HSV are currently under investigation. Herpes simplex virus type 1 infects about 90% of humans. You may not even know that you are infected, since this virus remains dormant in the neurons of the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. The neurons of the PNS include all of the neurons of the body that are present outside the brain and spinal cord, as the neurons in these two regions make up the central nervous system. Research has shown that there is a high prevalence of HSV-1 in AD brains, and that patients who tested positive for antibodies against HSV-1 showed a significantly higher risk of developing Alzheimer's. These antibodies are molecules that your body makes in order to fight against HSV. These molecules can be detected in the blood and used to identify the presence of the virus. In postmodern surveys of AD brains, HSV viral proteins and DNA were largely detected in regions of the brain that are most affected by Alzheimer's. Remember how we talked about the APOE mutated variant Epsilon 4? Well, studies have shown that patients who have this mutation, as well as infection by HSV, increase the chances of developing Alzheimer's by 12 times. And there is even more evidence. Scientists have also observed the production of enzymes that mediate the formation of beta amyloid and tau proteins by neuronal cells infected by HSV. Also, HSV has been shown to coexist in beta amyloid plaques with an observed 90% of the plaques contained by HSV DNA. When these results are taken together, this is strong evidence for the relationship between the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's and infection by the herpes simplex virus 1. We're hopeful that future research continues to investigate all the factors that contribute to the development of AD, which will allow us to gain a better understanding of AD as a whole. This will help researchers and clinicians develop more effective treatments for this highly impacting disease.